come and visit the family. Words are made of letter people. A, B, C, D, follow me. The Letter People. Today, the story of Mr. C and Mr. K. It's a dark, gloomy day in Letter People land. Mr. C, whose sound is the same sound that starts cotton candy, is upset. Because Mr. K's sound is the same sound that starts kicking. When we last left the letter people, an angry Mr. C was leaving. Let me go, Mr. T. I told you I'm leaving letter people land. As long as Mr. K is around, you don't need me. Oh, stop being so stubborn. We need all of the letter people. Hi, I'm sorry. How's everything? Terrible, Mr. K. Just terrible. Mr. Z says he's leaving letter people land. You bet I am. And you should know why, Mr. K. You've taken my sound, the same sound that starts cotton candy. Impossible. I already have my own sound, the same sound that starts kicking. Why would I want your cotton candy sound? I don't know why, but you've got it. Listen, cotton candy, kicking. Cotton candy, kicking. Oh, hey, both sounds are the same. You can't have my c sound, Mr. C. I was here first. You took my sound. You should be the one to leave. I'm not leaving. Then they should take away your sound, since it's mine anyway. You can't do that. Everyone in Letter People Land has his or her own sound. I'd have to leave. Good. Now hold on. No one's leaving. You're both going to Miss I's place and talk this over. We'll get this settled once and for all. Never a day without problems. Today it's C and K. Who's going to know which one of us is starting a word? Cotton candy and kicking both have a k sound. One of us has to go, and I think it should be you. You can't tell me to leave. You're not in charge here. Hysterical ham hocks. If you two don't stop arguing, I'm going to start pulling my horrible hair. But we both have the same sound. Cotton candy, k kicking, k. Since our sounds are the same, no one will be able to tell if the starting sound in words comes from my cotton candy or Mr. K's kicking. It's most confusing. We don't know which vowel to stand next to. How would you spell cat, Mr. H? C-A-T or K-A-T. Either way, the starting sound is the same because our sounds are the same. I've been working on that. See? Cat. Cotton candy. Cat. Kicking. It's a humdinger of a problem, all right. Giving you two the same sound was an oversight. So let's ask the vowels for their point of view. Let them suggest what we can do. Yeah, here's Miss A. Maybe she can help. How about it, Miss A? Which vowels does C and K stand next to? The letter girls and I have been talking it over, and we've decided that Mr. C and Mr. K will have to work it out themselves. We really don't care who starts the word. Oh, great. Just how are we supposed to do that? We can't agree on anything. We thought of that, too. We letter girls will stand over there. Once you two have decided which vowel you want to stand next to at the start of a word, put your name in front of that letter girl. Sounds fair to me. But once you've decided which vowel you want to stand next to, you can't change your mind. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. All right. You two go over there and decide. To help you think, Miss I has a surprise for you. All right you are, Miss A. Really, really big surprise on our really big stage. Direct from his latest appearance in beautiful downtown letter people land, here he is, and let's hear a really big round of applause for the perfectly pink strawberry ice cream soda. That should get you started thinking. We'll be over there in the order we arrive. I'll be first, then Miss E, I, O, and you. And I have to hustle over to the hot dog stand. See you later. Wow, this is really a big ice cream soda, Mr. C. Good, too. Why don't we wait till it's gone before we put our names next to the letter girls? All right, Mr. K. We won't decide till the soda is gone. Now, which vowels would I like to stand next to? I want to get a head start on Mr. K. Maybe I can get him to turn away. Then while he isn't looking, I'll put my name in front of Ms. A. Hey, Mr. K, what's that behind you? What? Who? Where? Huh? <laughs> now I have my name next to Ms. A. So in front of A, C must always stay. Everyone, please remember that. C makes the k sound in words such as cat. That's not fair. We haven't finished drinking the soda yet. Well, I'll fix you. 
because you wouldn't wait for me, I'll put my name next to two vowels, not one, Mr. C. No matter what you say, E and I will always be with K. Everyone now will have to agree that K has the K sound in kiss and in key. Oh, I'm upset as can be. You'll never get the best of me. Since you, Mr. K, did not care to share, now I, too, will be unfair. Near O and U, I'll place my name, and that ends our little game. Oh, dear, I didn't get my wish. Now, isn't this a fine kettle of fish? Mr. C will make words with vowels A, O, and U, leaving me, poor K, next to only two. E and I, I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> What's wrong with those two? Still squabbling about their sounds? Poor Mr. K is upset because Mr. C gets to stand next to three vowels, A, O, and U. While all K stands next to is E and I. Please do something, Miss A. We can't have Mr. K sobbing all day. Perhaps I can get them to play a little game. Mr. C, Mr. K, see if you know which one of you starts these words. Here's the first one. Aha, that's a cap. And I start the word because I stand next to Miss A. Cap. C-A-P. Right you are, Mr. C. But the next one isn't so easy. It looks like a little barrel, doesn't it? It's a cake. And I start the word with my k sound because I stand next to Ms. E. Keg. K-E-G. You're right, too. Okay, here's number three. Corn on the cob. Cob. I start the word with my k sound because I stand next to Ms. O. Cob. C-O-B. Very, very good. But watch out for this one. It's tricky. That's a baby goat. 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 I don't hear my k sound. Think, Mr. K. What do you call a baby goat? Mm. A, a kid. A baby goat is called a kid. And I start the word because I stand in front of Ms. I. K-I-D. Kid. Right again. Here's the last one. Cup. C-U-P. I start the word because I stand next to Ms. U. Sounds to me like your problems are over. What about squishing? Squishing? What about it? Well, I'll squish my sound with Mr. C, but I'm not getting in any squish box with Mr. K. We'll be so close together, he'll, he'll kick me in the shins. By golly, Miss A, I think he's right. I'm so used to kicking, sometimes I forget to stop. I can't be in a squish because I never, ever kick a person. Sure you can be in a squish, Mr. K? Let's go out back. We have some clue boxes set up. I don't see how this is going to work, Ms. A. If I use my sound to start a squish, I'll kick the letter person next to me. That's the key, Mr. K. You won't start a squish. You'll only be in the last part of a squish. How's that going to help? I'll still be kicking. But as long as you're in the last part of a squish, you'll only kick the clue box, not the person you're squishing your sound with. I'll prove it to you with the word skip. S-K-I-P. Skip. Mr. S is squishing his super sock sound with Mr. K's kicking sound. So you two get in the starting squish box. Miss I goes in the catching clue box because the catching sound is the same sound that starts itchy itch. And Mr. P and his pointy patches go in the ending clue box. S-K-I-P. Now, make your sound catch. Skip. See, Mr. S? Mr. K is kicking the clue box, not you. Skip. Fantastic. As long as you're in the last part of a squish, Mr. K, your troubles are over. Even if I'm squishing my sound at the end of a word? Well, let's see. Let's make the word milk. Sound it out, Mr. K. Milk. The starting sound I hear is the same sound that starts munching mouth. So Mr. M goes in the starting clue box. Milk. Itchy itch is the catching sound I hear. Ms. I goes in the catching clue box. Milk. I hear an ending squish. Milk. Mr. L is squishing his lemon lollipop sound with my kicking sound. So we go in the ending squish box. Very good, Mr. K. Milk. You're the last part of the squish. Milk. And you're kicking the clue box, not Mr. L. Milk. That should solve your problem, Mr. K. As long as you're the last part of the squish, you'll never kick another letter person. That takes care of him, but what about me? I suppose I don't get the squish? You won't have any problem in a squish, Mr. C. 
When we hear the k sound at the start of a squish, we know that it can't be Mr. K because he would kick someone. So it has to be you, Mr. Z. I can use my k sound to start a squish? Maybe we'd better make a word, Ms. A, just to be sure. All right, pick a word. Clap. K, cotton candy. Clap starts with a squish. Are you sure? I'll sound it out. Clap. I hear my sound, the same sound that starts cotton candy. Squishing with Mr. L's sound, the same sound that starts lemon lollipops. So I get in the starting squish box with Mr. L. But are you sure it's you and not Mr. K? Clap. The k sound starts the squish. So it's me, all right. Mr. K doesn't start a squish because he'd kick the person next to him. That's right. Mr. C uses the k sound at the start of the squish. Now, who goes in the catching clue box? Clap. Why, you do, Ms. A, because the catching sound is the same sound that starts at you. And Mr. P goes in the ending clue box because the ending sound is the same sound that starts pointy patches. Let's see if I'm right. Clap. Clap. Sounds to me as if you're right, Mr. C. Clap. Clap. I am right. Now, both of you should be satisfied. Mr. C makes the k sound when it starts to squish, and Mr. K can make the k sound in the last part of the squish. Each of you knows which balls to stand next to. C with A, O, and U, and K with E and I. Phew. All that squishing makes me thirsty. Let's go get a soda. I think that's more than fair, Miss A. Well, I don't. Mr. K, I don't care how much you cry. I still want to stand in front of all the vowels, including E and I. But you can't do that. We've already agreed which vowels we'll stand with. Oh, I'm getting out of here. You take over, Mr. H. Now what's wrong? We've agreed that I'll make the k sound next to E and I, and Mr. C will make the k sound next to A, O, and U. But he's being greedy. He wants to stand next to all the vowels. That isn't right. I agree. Mr. C, only Mr. K gets to make the k sound in front of E and I. Don't be so greedy. I can't stand any more of this squabbling. I have a secret mission to attend to. Wait a minute. Here's an idea. When I stand in front of E and I, why couldn't I borrow a sound from Mr. S? I think that's only fair since my name, C, goes with Mr. S's sound, Super Socks. C, Super Socks. How about it, Mr. S? May I borrow your sound? Oh, all right. Anything to get going. If K can keep his sound, I will agree to let C have a sound from me. I guess C has a proper claim. My sound goes exactly with his name. C may say S before E and I. Now I really must fly. Bye-bye. Yippee! Now I can say my k sound when I'm next to A, O, and U in words such as cat, cod, and cup. And I can make a s sound when I'm next to E and I in words such as scent, city, circle, and circus. Yay! But I'm still the only one who can make the k sound before E and I, as in keg and kite and kettle. Whew. I'm glad all this arguing is over. You're glad? Another day like this and they'll be calling me brilliantly bald instead of horrible hair.